might not be ready. My name is Terrence Nance and I'm an artist. The way I would describe my style is a little bit anticlimactic because I would actually say I don't have a style. <laughs> it, what ends up coming through is more channeled from another place. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just kind of trying to get out of the way of it, just speaking directly from my subconscious without judging any of the ideas or creative decisions. All you have to do is accept Christ. Somebody raise your hand and say, I accept my earliest memories of making art were in church, for sure. Being in the choir, playing instruments. I also worked in uh, the AV ministry at <laughs> the church. You know, we were shooting services, or editing them together, micro-creative decisions. When the pastor goes over there, like, you know, what are you going to do? I was in a very creative household. My mother's an actress, and just being on set. We were like in, definitely in plays and stuff as kids, and the earliest memories are more performance-based. A young lady has told you that she is coming to be in your company, so as you empty your pockets and begin to get settled, you see that she has telephoned you. Of course, you telephone her back. She tells you that she has just arrived at her own home and won't be coming to yours tonight. In 2012, I finished uh, my first feature. It's called An Oversimplification of Her Beauty. It was a film that I made without knowing how to make a film <laughs> or that I was even making a feature film. It gave me a lot of confidence, taught me that there's space for me and that it, I, I should feel entitled to that space. There was nobody stepping up to try to give me money to make a movie. Nobody, like, I didn't get that phone call. You know, I was teaching, you know, paying the rent. <laughs> I was working on the show at the same time. I was working on all the shorts I made at the same time, so. Keep a lot of different pans on the fire. You never know which meal's gonna be ready first, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. Uh, my latest project, Random Acts of Flyness, is on HBO and it's um, came about just like thinking about in the, the stream of consciousness of my community, our community, you know. I never saw a TV show that I was like, oh, we should make something like that. I just gathered the people I work with normally who are all writers and directors, you know, as opposed to more just like the idea of a TV writer. You need that kind of diversity of conceptualists as opposed to people who just sort of focus on plot and character and words on the page. I'm trying to tell you, blood, they out here playing mind games on us, man. This sort of like handmade way of working, kind of magic to kind of watch emotions to be placed inside of these inanimate objects. I know what they look like when they're not moving, you know what I mean? So special to me. It's interesting how people read it. I think our intention was just to show like what it's like when a neighborhood changes in a food desert from the perspective of a broccoli. You know, when resegregation happens and things change in, in a neighborhood, but what if you're the broccoli? in the grocery store for that process. <laughs> this is written and directed by Nuatama Badomo, who's one of the writers and directors on the show. She's really brilliant, and I can tell you what she told me, which is that this is about what it's like for her to process the news that I was processing, you know, white police, op black police officers in general are murdering uh, black people and black kids with impunity. It's a little too complex for words to, to to describe the emotional toll that it takes. Maybe you can't deal with the anger in that moment, so it goes to this absurdity. So I think it's about just like those layers of emotions, those tones. But she, you know, she specifically told me that this is her rage, you know, essentially. And I think I shared in that rage, you know, that's why it connects with me for sure. Tune in next week and we'll be welcoming Tanisha McDaniels, an unarmed black woman. The ultimate goal is just to connect to connect with people in a way that's effectual and substantive and has value for, for you and them. At least for me, making work is a conversation with younger iterations of, of myself and younger people in my community in hopes that there's it has value for them. When I first heard Equimini or AT Aliens or something like that, it felt like a conversation that I learned from, you know, so hopefully this work that I'm making has the potential to change people. I think the conversation that Random Acts is starting and having is wide ranging and, and fractal and layered in a way that it can't be encapsulated in a theme or a subject or a personality or anything like that. The conversation of being peopled inside of blackness and the expansiveness of it, just it, it's a testament to the complexity of that.